Well, Pete, thank you very much for taking me out. That's, um, that's a very, very tough way to make a living, I must say. Going not, out. Not as hard as being a chef. <laughs> oh, maybe, yeah, yeah. That's not an easy one either. But so we, we brought up um, a bucket full. Um, what do you think? We had about 20, 30 or so? 37. Or so 37. Wh what's that bucket worth at once, you, once you sell it off? What do you think? Well, if we sell it to the, uh, uh, the restaurants directly, they're $5 each. So mm -hmm. it's about a little under $200. Okay. All right. So that, that makes it even more of a tough living. Actually, well, <laughs> it, it it sounds like a lot of money until you pay all your bills, and, and then all of a sudden there's there's not much left. That's not much left. So yeah. most people they they um, know sea urchin only from the um, sushi bars, and they see the um, the tongue shaped lobe. Where exactly is that inside of there? Okay, can we crack one open? And we'll crack them. Ooh, yummy! See, these are the five tongues. This is a very large one. And now... Is that one you want? No. Let's eat one. Let's eat one. <laughs> it doesn't get any fresher than this. What's that? The heart? See, in a sushi... Other organs. In a sushi bar, You'll have them, but they've been processed for shipping to uh, Japan and China, where this isn't processed at all. And all you have is the kelp, a little bit of stomach lining that you take off like that, and then you have the kelp. And each each sea urchin will have five skeins of it. So this is basically his last meal here? That's it. It's all chopped up kelp. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, some of the Mediterranean people like it even with the kelp. They, they, uh, they just get rid of the stomach lining, but they don't get rid of the kelp. And I think that's how I once had it when I was a child in in France, and I didn't like it that way. I only liked it the first time I had it in a sushi bar. So you want half of this? I'll take this one. I'll try that. That's a nice yeah. sweet taste now. All right, cheers. Mmm, that's fresh. Mm-hmm. It's got a buttery, buttery mm -hmm. taste. You don't even need soy sauce with this, yeah. huh? All right, so we're back in my world. Um, I've been able to shake off that cold Pacific dive with a very long hot shower. Um, we've brought our catch with us. Our uni diver uh, gave us the nicest specimen that we have. They're, they're still alive. And that's about as fresh as it gets. Now, most people have, like I said, have only eaten sea urchin in the sushi bars. And... Um, there's different ways you can, you can prepare them. We do them here as a pasta carbonara with uni sauce. Um, but we also do a little dish called the uh, um, sea urchin bruschetta. And that's the one we're going to do here. Because if you decide to go diving for sea urchins yourself, or you're going to go and get some out in Point Loma, then this is something you can actually do at home. Um, you may not have this nifty tool to crack them open. I didn't have one like this until today either. But well, that makes it very easy to get to the inside of these guys. And right in there, that's what we're going for. We can just use a normal teaspoon to scoop those five lobes out. All the other stuff in there is basically the sea urchin's last meal. They're kelp-eating machines. And that's basically the kelp that this sea urchin has been munching on before he was cracked off the rock. So this is what we're after here. I'm going to take one more out here. Just kind of run the spoon along the inside and scoop it out like that. Remove the kelp. And like this, it's actually ready to eat. You can see that sea urchin stains your fingers. 
So maybe if you don't want your fingertips to look like mine, you wear gloves while you do this exercise. So the sea urchin, when you eat it like this, it has a, a sweet, buttery, very soft consistency. So what we're looking for is contrasting uh, textures and contrasting flavors. The base contrasting texture is going to be this crispy crouton. And then we want a little bit of zing in this recipe. And I have, from my days in New Orleans, a recipe for a red remoulade. So it's a basic remoulade that's spiced up with a little bit of uh, cayenne pepper. And then what we have here, this is, um, this is micro wasabi. So the plant that grows the root that you then grind into that green powder from the sushi bars is snipped off here when it's still a little sprout. So we're going to do a nice little heap of that on here. I'm going to put that here. So now we're going to scoop our nicest lobes here right on top. And then we want to envelope the whole flavor and give it a little bit of a, a, a smoky contrast. And what we're using for that is called Giancale. This is, um, this is the salt cured and air dried uh, jowl or cheek um, of a Spanish pig. And um, you can use this, shave it very thinly, or you can also use, if you have a whole bacon slab and just shave off the, the fatty part of the bacon, very thin. But you, you want to get to a consistency that is almost see-through, where it's barely holding together when you put it on the slicer. So we're going to put that over, just kind of pack it in like that. And the wraparound effect comes from blowtorching it. So we're going to use one of these. I'm sure everybody has one of these because you're doing all your plumbing work at home. Um, we use these actually for creme brulee but works really good on all kinds of things. So we just want to make that bacon turn translucent, and get a little blistery, just carefully go over it. And that's about the effect that we're looking for right here. And so here's our final product. Sea urchin bruschetta with red remoulade, micro wasabi, and torched lardo. Enjoy. <laughs>